Najee here and I'm back with another video. Now this video is going to be a try tea segment that is when you guys send me in your stories and we read them, we react to them, we kiki. This is the pre-recorded segment okay if you guys want a longer batch of content that is live that you guys can interact with make sure you tune in on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time and you can be a part of it so I literally just got done doing a tried tea today live so I'm literally just gonna jump back right in to the portion of the email that I was at and just roll with it. So if you guys like my track T segments, whether it's pre-recorded or live, please give this video a thumbs up. If you send me in stories, make sure that you are watching both because you never know when your story is going to pop up or which segment it's gonna pop up for. So yeah, I'm just, we're just gonna get right on into it. So this one is just called, this one's kind of short, a little short, a little long. This one is just called, please help. So they say, what's up Naja? I would like to remain anonymous. I'm just going to cut right to the point. I really appreciate you for that. <laughs> I'm a mess. I currently have no job. I'm distancing myself from everyone around. I don't get along with my parents. It's a lot on my plate. My mother is, in my opinion, literally a nutcase. She makes me feel guilty about certain things and then throws it in my face afterwards. For example, I used to work in a retail store. The hours were great and so was the pay. And since she's a single mother, I had to watch my sister for the summer. She's a single mother I know, so I get that she needs help, but now that she does really need me to babysit anymore, she acts like I never did it. I lost my job because of it, because I always had to be home. I haven't had a job since August. I thought my head having experience in two retail jobs would get me a job quick, but sadly, I was mistaken. I've had interviews, no callbacks. I make calls, they never get back to me. It's driving me insane. On top of that, me and my mom's relationship isn't the best. I'm not gonna ramble and go into depth, so I'm just gonna paraphrase as best as I can. Basically, she always has this attitude that's hard to deal with. It started in high school, and I guess as I got older and I have a larger voice, we butt heads. I'm currently 20, and now she's like, I need to move out. Keep in mind, she's been telling me this since I was in high school, so it's nothing new. Now after a little argument, she uses that as a, th a threat to control me. I feel like... I feel like I've already read this one and you sent it a second time. So this one is called, I was my dad's failed wing girl. That's fucked up that he even put you in that fucking situation, to be honest. I already see where this is going. Hey, Nadja, I really love your videos. Thanks, boo. I am a 17-year-old girl, and your advice helps me on some things and sometimes helps me reflect on myself. This is just a mini story from my childhood. I don't think it's depressing. There is a happy ending to it. I think I was five when this happened. Jesus. I was at my grandma's visiting for about a week, I believe, and I remember my dad always bringing friends over. So one night he brought a girl over and her name was Sierra. Sierra was about 6'1", almost as tall as my dad and was honestly really pretty. She had blonde hair and had tattooed her lips. She tattooed her lips. It says she tattooed her lips pink. Where they do that? What? I've heard of girls tattooing their eyebrows and eyeliner, but your lips, like Jesus. She was also really good with kids because every time she came over, it was a fun time. Well, all I know is the next day I'm seeing another girl who is also blonde that wears pink lipstick. Her name is Taffy. I didn't see Taffy around as much as I did Sierra. In all honesty, I thought they were the same person. But after the back and forth, wait. <laughs> You said you thought they were the same person, just different names apparently, okay. But after the back and forth, my dad finally told me to not tell his girl that he had a side piece. I nodded my head and said, yeah, but honestly, I think I was zoned out and didn't really care since I was just a kid, most likely. But you know, sometimes kids slip up and we just don't think anything is wrong and then we say the wrong shit and then it starts a fucking argument. I didn't realize he had an actual girlfriend because they were all his friends. I didn't see anything wrong with it at the time. So Sierra comes over and I call her by Taffy by accident. See, that's what, like, I'm telling you, like, you can't be doing shit like that around kids because they're going, they don't know, like, they're going to say something. Like, they don't know any better. She looks at me really confused, leaned down and asked me, who is Taffy? I looked at her honestly and said, I thought you were Taffy. She gets mad and she says, I'm not Taffy, I'm Sierra. I'm sitting there thinking, oh shit, wait, what? Then she continues on as my dad's walking in. It's okay, baby, just tell me who Taffy is. <laughs> I would've been like, daddy, <laughs> daddy, <laughs> this girl, she found out daddy. 
<laughs> I'm suddenly getting really anxious like I did something I wasn't supposed to do. My dad was trying to butt in saying, yeah, who's Taffy? There's no Taffy here. Why would you say that, bro? Your daddy is so fucked up, bro. Like, why would he put you in this situation? Like, that's so fucked up. But Sierra told him to shut up and told him to go away and let me speak to her. He stayed there though and said, no, no, I want to know who Taffy is. The anxiety got so much worse that she kept pushing me to talk. I finally told her real quiet because I didn't know what else to say. And I told her that that was my dad's girlfriend. And after that, a whole ass fight broke out between the two of them. All I hear is a bunch of yelling and screaming until the front door slams shut and I'm left alone with my dad who is extremely pissed. He told me, I told you not to tell her about Taffy. I was crying because and honestly, I can't remember what happens after that. I do know, however, that Sierra got pregnant with my younger brother about a year later. They've gotten away from my dad though, and I'm assuming they're really happy with their new life in California. Why would any adult put something like that on a five-year-old though? Exactly, like that's way too much and that's not cool. He shouldn't even have brought you around either of them, to be honest, until he knew he was serious about them. Like he should have just kept them away from you, period. Like it just did his own dirt. Anyways, I'm okay now and I don't live with him or my grandma anymore. I live with my mom where I should have stayed. That's what's up. I'm glad you're out of that because that's just too messy and that's not fair to put all that responsibility on a child and it's like the fact that he told you straight up that was his side piece like whoa why would you say that to a five-year-old like that's really twisted like has anything like that ever happened to you guys when you were younger? I was my dad's wingman before but he he basically asked me who I would prefer to be in um, my life because he was talking to two girls but he didn't really know. I didn't like either of them and I told him that straight up and my dad left both of them like and now he's with his wife like like literally I wasn't so much of a wingman as much as like my dad didn't really have them around me and when he did he did say they were just friends and he never really cross that boundary but then once he told me like okay I like both of these people who could you see being your stepmom and I told him neither of them I didn't like either of them and yeah I love my stepmom so and I love my half brothers and sisters so so yeah I mean I've been a wingman before but it's never been like toxic like that like that's really fucked up and that could really fuck with a kid's head and your dad was not right I'm glad that you moved away so this one is short it just says, is he cheating? So someone says, hi Naja, my niece showed me your channel and how you give how you give advice. And girl, I'm sorry, I just had like a malfunction. And how you give advice. Girl, I need some advice. I met this guy and we're gonna call him David and he was a chill type of person and he had his own problems with his mom, by the way. Did I mention he's 27 and I'm 37? And he told me he doesn't know how to trust people because he got hurt so many times. And so one day I tried to call him and I got no answer and no text, no nothing. And he called me a day after his birthday and he wasn't chatty much and told me he will call me later. Before I could say anything, he hung up and I have a bad feeling he has another girl on the side. What do you think I should do? Please help me. I think you should leave him alone. Cause usually when guys do that whole, oh, I've been hurt before, I don't trust nobody. That basically means they were hurt once and now they're gonna replicate the behavior of that person who hurt them to make them feel better. So I definitely see him as cheating or at least playing the field because it doesn't seem like you guys are in a relationship. I would just leave him alone. He's not picking up the phone for you. He's hanging up on you mid conversation. Leave that boy alone and trust me, the second that you go and do your own thing, he's gonna come knocking right on that door. Plus he's 27, like he don't know what the fuck he want. Like, girl you mm -mm, leave him alone i definitely think he's cheating what do you guys think put it in the comments below i definitely think he's cheating what is that what is this love it's too early for this bro. <laughs> I love you. it's too early for this i love you too Tribe T, he wanted a threesome with me and my best friend. <sighs> this is the time that me and my best friend were take talking to the same guy and he tried to have a threesome with us. I'll start off with how me and my best friend Haley met this guy, Alex. One night, me and Haley were outside of my house and it was like 9 p.m. and we were just chilling on the tailgate of my dad's truck <laughs> and this this story already sound country as fuck like but all right um and my friend mark was walking by our house with alex 
me and Mark are really good friends so he stopped to talk to us and he asked us if Alex could chill with us for a bit because he had to go to someone's house to get some weed and the guy he gets it from isn't really chill with Alex or whatever. Mark said he would be back in 30 minutes because it was like a 10 minute walk and I was like okay sure that's cool. Alex stayed with us outside to wait for Mark and we were talking to him for a bit and he seemed nice but was very nervous and awkward which is understandable because he did not know us. Mark was gone for over two hours. What type of, what? He was probably over there smoking. He was not, <laughs> we were both getting cold and tired. So I texted him to hurry up and get his friend. Like, bitch, it's almost 12 o'clock. <laughs> you over here babysitting, oop, oop, oop. I done kicked him. You babysitting this man's friend. That's crazy. Alex ended up adding me and Haley on Snapchat and we started talking more. I was talking to multiple guys for fun and he soon became one of them. We talked for a few weeks and one night my best friend came over and little did I know that he was also talking to her and she didn't know that he was talking to me. Apparently she really liked him and had feelings for him so I kind of backed off because I didn't really want him but she, he still talked to me and called me pretty or whatever. Mind you, this guy is a junior in high school and me and Haley are both in the eighth grade. What the fuck are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? Why y'all even talk? Like, what are we doing here? Like, what are we doing? Like, y'all need to call the police. Like, what are we doing here? Like. Where's, where's that? Where? She came over a week later and we were really bored and she was texting him and she told him that we were bored or whatever. Tell me why this guy straight up goes, would y'all be down for a threesome? Why don't you take a seat right over there? Oh my God, I wish that y'all parents I wish that y'all parents saw that conversation. I would've, ooh boy, if I was your mamas, if I was your mamas, I would've, boy, I would've screenshotted all that shit and sent it to the fucking police. I don't care. Cause that's fucking gross. Like bro, like I understand y'all are all minors and shit still, but it's just the fact that it's like, you're still in middle school. Like you're, he's about to leave high school. Like that's not cool. I was like, fuck no. I love my best friend. And we're not about to start doing grown shit with this guy that's almost 18 years old. We're only 13 and 14. Let's go. Exactly. This is what I'm, I'm proud of y'all. I'm proud of y'all. I'm so proud of y'all because I can't tell you how many of these tribe tees I get of some of y'all little grown ass 13, 14 year olds. I stay having to put y'all in check in private because that's not cool at all. It's not cool. Like, I'm so proud of y'all for that. I'm so proud of y'all for that. What I don't get though is if y'all are best friends, why wouldn't y'all have been said that y'all were talking to the same dude? But I'm very proud of how you guys handled the situation. We both ended up blocking this guy after he continued trying to reach us on Instagram. This happened almost two years ago and I really regret being so stupid and talking to a bunch of guys trying to act grown and shit. Me and Haley are still best friends to this day and we were recently in the store checking out and we look back and we see Alex in scrubs. This man is a whole nurse in training now. <laughs> We both agreed that we would rather die than let this man put hands anywhere near us. Moral of the story, don't mess with older guys when you're a minor. Yes, exactly. Like, just leave these boys alone. Leave them alone. Like, they're not worth it. Leave it the fuck alone. Leave it the fuck alone. It's really not worth it. These dudes always want something more than what you're willing to give because you're still a baby and they're not. All right, so we're gonna do, this is the last one. We're gonna do one more. And it's just called Tribe Tea, you know? Just try to eat. I love, thanks for being one of the best personalities on YouTube. Thanks, boo. I'd like to stay anonymous for this one because honestly, I'm trifling. Oh Lord, where's my... I don't know why Daniel brought this in here. Cause I definitely gotta go to my grandma house and pay her rent. We'll help her pay her rent. And now I'm gonna have to get drove over there because y'all really, y'all about to drink me to death. Like this is not cool. It's up to you to tell me how trifling I actually am. Okay. Here's the story. I was in a relationship for a little over a year when my boyfriend, we'll call him Jay, cheated on me. He had sex with someone else and told me through an email. What the fuck? <laughs> we emailing breakup letters now? Oh my God. Yes, there's a reason why it was through email, but not a good enough reason. So I'm not even gonna mention it. I kind of wish you would have because I'm really um, confused about that. After that, I tried to be cool with him because I honestly had never felt love like I had with him before. So I thought I, I could at least keep a connection. He kept crying for me back, understandably so, but then I found out more and more that was just straight up disres disrespecting me and made me look stupid. So eventually I was able to get over him the more I saw what, that he wasn't shit. 
nowadays I'm just straight up using him that's I know that shit's right I know that's right <laughs> I told him I am not interested in getting back together but of course he says he will always fight for me and blah 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 so when I do decide to see him I get him to smoke me out because I know he will I have a car but I'll get him to take me to do errands so I don't use gas and I'm just not bored alone for a while I was using him for sex too but the D ain't even that good no more since I'm not in love <laughs> You are trifling. You're trifling, but I'm fucking here for it, okay? But you're trifling as shit, but I'm here for it. These are the only reasons I see him, really. It's crazy what he will do for me. I was sick last week from school, and when I had to go back, I realized all the homework I had built up. So I called him sounding sniffy, asking him to do my homework. Nadja, this boy wrote a whole damn essay for me, and he still offered to do more while I didn't lift a damn finger. I usually feel bad about it because I think I'm dogging him out the way he did me. But then he will do sweet shit like bring me flowers and shit that he never did when we were together. Before I would even let him take me out sometimes, but last time I did, he kissed me on the cheek and I made the most stank face ever on accident. I felt so bad and I said I don't think we should do coupley stuff anymore and he agreed. But he's still there every time I want to get high or bring me food when I don't want to leave the house. So the question is, am I straight up hoeing him or is it well deserved? I could tell you more of the story about what he did, but it was going to be a long email. Thanks for reading. To be honest, I mean shit. At the end of the day, nobody is forcing him to do anything. If he wants to be a lap dog, let him do that. In my opinion, I hope you're not telling him that there is a possibility that you guys could be together in the future and that's why he's doing it. Then I'm like, okay, you should feel bad. But the fact that you told him like, we should not be doing coupley stuff. Like I'm not getting back together with you. And he's still doing all this shit thinking that you're gonna be back together with him. That's him, that's him doing his own shit. And if anything, you're teaching him a lesson that no matter what, when you cheat, girls ain't gonna take you back. You can do anything under the sun. They're not gonna take you back if you're a dog. It might help him out in the future. But honestly, I would just chill. Now, if you wanna pursue a new relationship, that's when I feel like you should nip that shit in the ass because that's not a good look. But if you're just happy being single, doing your thing, let him, shit, if that's what he wants to do, let him do it. What do you guys think in the comments below? I would love to hear your opinion about this. That is it for the Tribe T segment. If you guys want your stories in the segment, make sure you email the email below and you could be on here. All right, see you next time, bye.